Hey guys, Adam Savage here in my cave with my old friend and colleague Dave Fogler. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, recently on the channel, I did a show and tell of this beautiful model that Dave snuck into the bathroom of my cave and installed. Uh, and then you also shot a video that you put up on your own YouTube channel of the install, the surreptitious install. And this video is building upon both of those uh, because we have some shared history here. Back in the in the uh, early to mid 90s, 94, 95, I was working on Home Alone 3 uh, in Jamie Heineman's shop with legendary designer Nilo Rodas Gemero, who famously designed Boba Fett's ship and a whole bunch of really important models and props and pieces from Empire on. Yes? Yeah. Uh, and I, what I felt like at that moment in time that I was like a lowly model maker in Jamie's shop was that Nilo saw something in me and was like, hey, do you want to do some freelance work for me? And I remember being super flattered by his attention and also really excited by his design process because he did tons of sketching, but he also hired people to do sketches based on his sketches. He did lots of like octopus type reaching out towards ideas to find the right one. Yeah, he's sort of a quintessential art director, production designer. He has all those kind of qualities of passion about what he's making and let's get it done and let's do it fast. And you know, these are the details and... And you have a similar history from the mid nineties with him. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, when I, I arrived at ILM, similar experience as you, I got there not long before you, but at the time it seemed like, a, like I was a seasoned veteran. <laughs> yeah, by that's the time you arrived. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I hadn't been there long and Nilo needed someone to make prototypes, talked to Richard Miller, and Richard Miller tossed me to my first G job. Oh. I remember being confused by that. It's like, wait, I can go work for Nilo while I'm also... Um, G job. G job was our appellation at ILM for the gravy job. The gov you called it government work, gravy work. G job was a side job. Yeah. So I appeared at Nilo's little studio in San Rafael, not really knowing who Nilo kind of was. <laughs> you know, so I was pretty young and green. And he was developing some stuff, had a lot of artwork and needed prototypes, not only to flesh out the design, but also to help, you know, a, a, a three-dimensional version of a two-dimensional piece of artwork really helps other people understand what this is and helps Nilo understand exactly what that is. Yeah. yeah. He, <clears throat> it's hard to overestimate his effect on me. He's the guy that introduced me to Miyazaki. Well, me too. I don't know if I've ever told you this. No, I didn't. Yeah. He sent me to that video store in Japantown at the mall and said, buy this video called Laputa. It's Castle in the Sky. It'll eventually be translated, but it doesn't matter. Just watch it in Japanese. The, he said it's the greatest opening sequence in any movie ever. He took me to his house and sat me down in his living room <laughs> and showed me clips from VHS tapes. Amazing. Yeah, so clearly that was his foundational design aesthetic, and he wanted both of us to get it. Years later, uh, he told me that he went to Japan and met with Miyazaki and said, why don't you make live action films? And Miyazaki was like, why would I want to? <laughs> yeah. I have, I can do any universe I want. I mean, the thing that was lovely about talking to, that is lovely about talking to Nilo is, like you said, his passion. He's so excited about design in every possible form. And so the conversations were really, I, again, I felt very flattered by the attention as like in my late 20s you being, being listened to by this wonderful designer. Yeah. And working with people like that is the pleasure of it is that they have it's their job description. They have the luxury to be passionate about the details. Sometimes in our job, we didn't have that luxury. You had, you had to like get this thing done by eight. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's researching things. I have this I have a piece of his that he gave me talking about making this robotic sculpture and in handwriting next to it, he says, might as well use the bee research. And, you know, he did bee research and then, you know, was pleased because we got to talk about it and how the feet were gonna be on this robot, yeah. I will also say it was an early education in how some people can get stuff done because we were doing Home Alone 3 and there were, some, there were some hitmen or bad guys in Home Alone 3 and he wanted them to have a case full of like cool looking equipment and what I remember was him trying to get me to build it for him just for free off to the side. <laughs> it was just like throw into the film. And it was Jamie that was like, man, this happens with art directors from time to time. Their budget, they, wrote, they run out of budget, but they want another thing. Uh -huh. You can do it if you want. <laughs> yeah, I found the invoices I gave him for those jobs. I didn't charge him much. <laughs> so what we want to do here today is finish this. Yeah, because of course this isn't, prototype I gave him. This is uh, some things I found in my shop. It's been so long that like it was since we did this stuff that you find little things in boxes. And these are the wren shaped 
bucks that I use to make the plastic parts to make the ship. And I spoke to him recently and was incredibly pleased that he told me that this model of this bike he cares for so much that he's kept it with him and he still has it in his office. We're gonna, let's try and get a picture of that so we can cut <laughs> it in here because that, that is super awesome. So we're gonna finish the second one. Yeah. Excellent. So this is, I've talked about this material all the time on this channel, Ren Shape. It's fancy model makers modeling modeling block. It's monolithic, so it has the same finish no matter where you cut it, unlike wood, which has a grain. Yeah. Um, and then it vacuum forms all day long in the most beautiful way. So we're going to be doing some vacuum forming, some classic model making, and um, well, we should be done by lunch. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying earlier, <clears throat> this would take me a week, uh, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pick up my pace in the Savage shop. Um, and, well, the other thing is, is that uh, you also, you stayed at ILM for you, a total of 23 years? 21. 21 years. Uh, eventually being the effects director on Transformers films. One of them. One of it, them. It, it takes a village. <laughs> you did my favorite part of all the Transformer films, and no lie, that the, the mechanical transitioning is what I think is the loveliest part of all of those. Yeah, also took a lot of people, but the, and you take it for granted, but when, it was one of those great jobs, because all great jobs start with having no idea how to do what it is you yeah, have to do. Yeah. Um, yes. and, and that was one of the greats uh, because the ask was pretty extreme and it took a lot of people think, playing around for quite a while and doing it wrong for a little while. When the physics works, it really works. And when it doesn't, you also did something I'm super jealous of. Sorry, there's one, because uh, we talked about this a lot when you were over in CG and you were like, no, model making in CG feels like the same kind of creative process. And then you got to supervise the building of the Millennium Falcon, the digital Millennium Falcon. Yeah, but the geekiest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, about, I just I want you to tell the story about going down to LA and taking pictures of the five footer. So when Force Awakens was looming, it was a big, big deal. It was the relaunch of yeah. the thing, and you know, team put together. And I've never been on a show where there was so much self-conscious concern about what we were doing. I've like, got to do it right. Can't mess it up. Right. Um, <laughs> And the, we, before we had a script, the one thing we knew, J.J. Abrams could tell us, we're going to need the Millennium Falcon. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> and I said, all right, well, let's make the Millennium Falcon. Um, and it was also kind of the kind of show that was a joy because it was filled with people who were interested in sort of the, the original stuff. Yeah. And then these wild conversations about, well, we want it to look like the original, but we don't want it to look actually exactly like the original because Time we can make passed. things look better but yeah. we can't make it look too good <laughs> um, but the assignment on the falcon after a bunch of discussion was for now we just want to make a computer generated version that is the five foot episode four falcon straight up and yeah. it's also a rare job because it's like whatever however long you know rare right uh, yeah. very rare um, so I found the five footer and it was on tour with uh, the, with the magical myth or one of the Lucasfilm exhibits. Yeah. So with much negotiation, we got to the museum and they let us have it during the nighttime and take the case the vitrine off, off. Oh take gosh. the vitrine off. Um, and I, I, I think I'm being objective when I say that. A, the Millennium Falcon is one of the greatest pieces of industrial design of all time. Hands down, I totally agree. And that model is just, every bit of it is stunning. You called you me, know. I think almost from the museum <laughs> or the next day, you were like, I've, I've never imagined a model could be this pretty and this coherent. Yeah, and the story of its making is a whole show. But, you know, Joe Johnson was in there working on that thing and designing Crazy. it as he went. It the whole process. The weekend of Joe Johnson's hamburger drawings <laughs> is one of the great weekends in my... The, the, stories, the stories around that thing we can talk about forever. But by the time I'm involved, I'm just in love with it and wanting to make a beautiful version of it. And we, and we scanned it. It's funny, these days you can scan with your phone. Back then we had all this. Right, yeah. um, and so I had scans of it um, and the best photography I could take of it, which is a bigger challenge than you think because what color is it? Oh my God, yeah. Um, and then, you know, photographs with parallax and the scale is wrong, but the scans were, were pretty crucial. Um, and then because it was so early in the show, I just got to sit down and start making the Falcon. You know, I didn't finish it, that thing. I can't quantify the hours that went into it, but at a certain point, halfway through, I pulled in some other model makers 
uh, you know, a wonderful texture artist, uh, solo textured that bad boy. And, I, I, and I'm really proud of that model. It's a beautiful thing. What I love is the, everyone thinks, well, CG makes everything really easy. Yeah. And I think I remember you saying that you were like, I went down to photograph it thinking we're going to make the best Millennium Falcon ever. And you like said, after I looked at it, I thought right. we're going to try and do justice <laughs> to this masterpiece. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's a laborious process no matter how you slice it. Yeah. Yeah. And a, and a computer is a tool, like a table saw is a tool and it's a seductive tool. So people think that it gives you stuff for free and it never gives you <laughs> anything for free. Uh, you know, there's, there's the same, the same labor is involved. All right. Well, let's get into some old school modeling. Yeah. Uh, you have your head wrapped around this way more than I do. So you want to pull out some drawings and we'll figure out where, where I can start to assist. Yep. 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 There's a lot of versions of it. Mm -hmm. This is often the case when you're dealing with the design of something. This is a collection of... Oh, these aren't all one session of his sketches. No. This is a bunch of different ones. Yeah, different times, okay. different all things, right. different views. Um, and since we don't have an art director telling us what to do, we I, can do whatever we want. We can do whatever we want. Um, and I kind of shifted into, oh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, my habit around a, a job like this is when you have to get something from 3D into 2D, I need orthographics for kind yeah. of obvious reasons. Sure. Um, so I created from this collection of stuff, uh, sort of what I consider my best of orthographic of something, something to build. You got to right. start somewhere. Yeah. Um, and in a lot of ways, a project like this isn't ideal for two people. Typically, it's kind of one person hunkered down. Yeah. Right there. But in this case, you and I are actually fairly well uh, suited to do this. I think we both consider ourselves generalists. We are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but every generalist needs specialties. And if I have a specialty, it's curved, so curved, not curved organic surfaces, but curved mechanical surfaces, yeah, if that's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Um, and you are certainly an engineering uh, mechanics guy. Uh, and this has a great big beautiful gun oh, sitting okay. underneath it. Yeah. Um, and Nilo, when Nilo described this thing to me, he said, it's a flying gun. And when it fires, it even like recoils as it flies and then goes on and boom. Um, oh, and, wow. And what these do is compress, open up oh. in order to compensate for that. Oh, oh, that's <laughs> neat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so in mine, I did actually hinge them to open up. It certainly looks fine with them closed, but I think we certainly need that thing to be posable. Mm -hmm. Right. So in the back of this thing, we're going to need, you know, a mechanism that eh, eh, and eh, eh. Yeah. I think I have some stop mill armature pieces that could suffice for such a thing. Yeah. I'll also say in terms of the design, you always go into this understanding some things, not understanding 80% of it. I, I think I kind of get the front end. Yeah. I get this. My sketches get looser as I go. Yeah, come this back is here. a this, this is a funny one because this is like a kind of a car tire toroid yeah. back here. And does it continue across the whole back of the thing? Yeah. And and the you know, a lot of these have this big that looks like the uh that's the back that oh, is the, the back. Speeder? No, it's the back of the blockade runner. Oh, yeah, you're right. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um but in my mind, this makes like a big mass up here and a big mass up here, and it's not as like yeah. front heavy and fast. So I kind of like the ones that suggest that he's going to get all well, these don't have right, anything. Right, back right. There. But it is a circular. Well, do you want to, um, let's see. We've got these. Th so it looks like these panels could be vacuformed over. I was going to say, these. I think it'd be fun to reuse that. Yeah. I don't think any of the rest of this applies. So what do I understand? I understand that. Mm -hmm. I understand this thing. I'd like to start with that. Okay. Once, once, once we've got that middle thing, we can kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like once we start this, I feel like you should start on the body, like that that main form of the body, yeah, and then that'll the, make the really mysterious. Yeah, form of that'll the body. that'll yeah, make that'll know. make this solution a lot more obvious when we get to it. Yeah. And I can vacuum form both sides of this to get these and start working on this gun underneath, and yep. that should also help proportionalize how these weights work with each yeah. other. This this gun, I guess I'm taking the cue yeah, from this yeah. three quarter. You know, if you remove the bike, I think, you know, that's a whole thing. Yeah, and exactly. It, and it's like mounted under mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we will, I can totally, that. I can just jump in right to that. Yeah, and there can be some nice kind of mechanical business, maybe even a hose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hose. I've got a, I've got a whole, I've got a greebly section up there that's pretty right. accessible. Because at a certain point, this control 
panel front has to be done too. Yep. Oh, here's here's mine. Yeah, Greebly party. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. And look, and I didn't really like the way I resolved this on mine either. It kind of comes up to this half round and then shoots back. Oh, maybe it's not so. There's good. a actually, well, actually there's a know. motorcycle seat I want you to take a look at. Hold on. Nilo would oh. make the point. No sitting on this thing. Oh, no sitting. Right, right. I see. He's riding it like a... Wow. Yeah. Like in, a jockey. In the one I made, I built a shelf for the feet to go onto. Oh, that's great. But I look at this and I wonder if Nilo liked what I did because these don't have that. Right. I don't really know where the feet go. Right. But I think the suggestion You had is, to give it something. Yeah. But maybe it has sort of a... Mm -hmm. uh, motorcycle pegs or a thing oh, or well, they, something. They, you'd probably, and they need yeah, to do yeah. this. They're gonna, they're gonna have some mechanics that show that they angle for, yeah. for control. I'll also say that design element I'm not sure about is this back, you know, yeah. th this back this fin. Thing. You know, I, I'm kind of fond of the more fin-like thing mm -hmm. versus the whatever that is. Um, and I quickly tried that ortho. Mm -hmm. I think this might be the sort of thing that we get other things built Once and we, then get some, yeah. piece, get some cardboard and try yep, some yep, shapes. Yep. I totally agree. Then it'll become really obvious. Yeah. Uh, are you vacuum forming and I'm vacuum forming right away? Or do you? <laughs> uh, oh, here I put it on. I'll take it off. All right. It's zapped, right? Wow. Ren shape and zap. Oh, dang. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. Oh, I see. Oh, there we go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, chisel banger. Yeah. You ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I was actually, I, I was amused, I amused myself 26 years ago with this because it's a buck that goes both ways. No, I dig that ways. part. I, I yeah. like that part specifically. And this side's a little messed up now, yeah, but, uh, I'll sand it but it's battle damage. Excellent. Oh. You're going to have a part done before I have my work surface prepared. <laughs> Well, I still have to clean up the other side. I'm doing the clean side first. It's funny. I, I, I'm rarely, I'm rarely bothered by kind of messy, broken-looking, accidental things. Um, and I was, so like, it wouldn't break my heart if, like, that little rib stayed broken on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, I was, I my, my, my first big. I can't believe I'm doing it. Gig on episode one was doing big chunks of that battle tank. Um, and we were finishing it. <laughs> You're on fire. That's. I got it quite soft. It's beautiful. Ooh, I got it soft. Oh yeah. It looks just right. That's great. Not quite as crisp as I'd like, but I don't have any thinner styrene. Oh, it's all popping out cooperatively though. Oh, that's great. But when I was putting a greebly detail on that finished tank. Yeah. I was, because it was a, a, a big messy tank, I was letting the, the zap drip and kind of burn and bubble. And I was really pleased with myself and, and golly, <laughs> kind of came by and said, oh, clean that up. You know, I, I once got into it with Charlie Bailey over some solder wire that I was making look like conduit. And he was like, it looks a little ratty. And I'm like, sure. And he's like, replace it. And I kind of forgot to replace it. And I came <laughs> back in the next morning and it was like, I want to watch you pull it out. <laughs> Was it Ease and Fulmer and all of those guys doing the Falcon, the body, the main body of the work there? Do you oh, remember who oh, was supervising oh, the, uh, that one? The five footer? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I certainly know that Lorne was working on it. 
you know, who engineered the bulk of it, I don't know, but it's famously ridiculously heavy. Is it really? Yeah, they, they, they had to build it really, really quickly. Because, I think I remember seeing chunks of acrylic being used for the box. It's, 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 it's like plywood, thick plywood and thick acrylic. Right, um, right, I right. A, I can't give you a weight, but it's a lot. Um, and that's why they, well, one of, one of the major reasons why they rebuilt, made a new one for Empire that was smaller, three feet, um, and more thought out and not quite so heavy. Well, they couldn't get a long shot of it because it was too big, too. Yeah. I have a presentation that I give, sort of a design, a design lesson based on the story of the design of the Falcon. And there's just, there's not many stories, not many design stories better than that one. It's a lesson in the weird, the weird road. I mean, a great I even... design needs to take in order to land in a new, new place. I remember being 10 and being like, it looks like it's going backwards. Oh, I get it. It's just like, I'm resetting my head about what design means. Yeah. Right? Oh, that first smoke point. There it is. I let it get real soft. Come on, there we go. So I'm doing a technique that we used to do in the shop all the time, which is uh, I've got a vacuum form and I want to cut it at a very specific level. And I put it on a nice flat surface and I use the sharp point of a surface gauge here, of a, a height gauge, to actually score into the styrene. And it actually, it literally scores and does a little bit of cutting and that's enough to kind of actually be able to separate the styrene out. This is how you make nice flat parts in theory. Yeah, it's been a while since I've built with styrene. Yeah. And it has me thinking about that thing that I think about, I think maybe more than most people, which seems like common sense, but I think a lot of people don't consider it. What's that? Which is the degree to which the material and tools you're using influence the product. Yeah. Um, and I think it's incumbent on the designer and a builder to fight the tools yes, as, yeah. as, as needed, because you can't let the tool dictate the form. No, you're, um, yeah. And boy, I mean, even this first part I made, I look at it and think, oh, I would have done that differently on yeah. a computer. And I kind of made some of those decisions based on the fact that I'm putting styrene together and that's how styrene works. Right, right, yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. And... It's impossible to do this kind of design maquette work with styrene um, without, you know, without being motivated by and inspired by that stuff that Goodson did for episode one. Because I'd never seen anything like it at that time. It was in that hidden little room. That Up at the ranch? The, no, at no. that point they'd come down to the shop and all they those... had a locked little room oh. with all those little styrene prototypes. prototypes he'd made. And I'd never seen anything like it. And I thought, I want to learn how to do that. And that's kind of, that was my focus pretty much in the model shop was learning how to do that. I remember actually later in my tenure at ILM choosing to build a whole chunk of the Terminator 3 set out of styrene hand built just to show goods that I can work without the laser cutter if I needed to. All right. Now this is where I show them to you and they're both the same part. <laughs> that feels pretty good. Perfect. Yeah. I'll put a little return on that. Yep.
What I like about you having cut both of these forms out of the same piece is that I'm sure the measurements all work. <laughs> that is true. I may make a, I'm gonna end up making another copy of your drawing because I'm using this as a cutout. I, I printed out a bunch. Awesome. It's kind of rare to use five minute epoxy on a project like this, but I need something thick to hold this together. That's, Lauren Peterson told me that whole five foot falcon was all five minute epoxy. Yeah, which can you imagine? <laughs> he was like, we would do up like enough parts for all the fingers we had and then just hold them there while they were setting. <laughs> Power. <laughs> Same. The uh, the very first model part I made at ILM when they said, "Want to make a model?" and I said, "Oh, sure." Uh, and it was the the landing pad for the small deep impact um, ship. Oh, okay. And it was small, teeny little wren shaped landing pad foot that I made, yeah. about this big. And I was done and pleased with myself, and I went over to one of those big sanders and was just doing one of those oh, last, look, and it went, whoom! <laughs> and I kind of looked around, <laughs> stepped away, went back to my desk and just made another one as fast as I could. <laughs> so many times. <laughs> All right, I'm about to lock down the width of our uh, flying bike. Eh? Uh, well. Eh? I'm, a, I'm making a pair of these to house yeah. probably about here and here. You know, for the size of these. Stop. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> First. Sure, be brave. All right. Happy with that width? Better be. <laughs> Committed now. Uh -huh. I mean, when you're doing things like this for actual productions, it's sometimes hard not to be self conscious about these dozens of little, seemingly little decisions you make. Yes. Uh, because, you know, in, in a production, it's entirely possible they'd end up building a full size version of this bike. And, like, you know, right now I'm making someone's job really hard if I. We, we had this weird. on Space Cowboys. We put a Universal Greebly inside the Russian model, and they built a set, the full-size set, based on our model, and their Universal Greebly is about eight inches in diameter. <laughs> Perfect. It's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I don't know that you and I ever you know, worked on a project together in the model shop. We did a little bit of work on the droid battle tank lake set with the mirror, Yumi <laughs> right. and Seagull. Seagull. This kept buying more plants, hauling them <laughs> in day after day. More plants! I replicated that, uh, I replicated that set for a Galoob Toys photo shoot. Huh. Uh, well, it, we, we didn't work together very much in the model shop, but the last time you and I made models like this together were those Galoob prototypes. It was what? Those, those Galoob prototypes we made in your... That's right. In your... In your um, Shop. We, we also worked on. Oh yeah, you were on Topoka City. Oh yeah, we were right. all on Topoka City. <laughs> all on Topoka City. That was fun. I have a bunch of those masters. Do you really? The parts I made, all the little towers. Oh, god, that was so much fun. That was uh, that was the site of my first huge professional disappointment. Which was what? Um, it, it's it starts with a, one of those early career lessons about working hard, doing good work, but also speaking up, thinking about what you want and asking for uh -huh. it, like letting people know what you want, Yeah. Um, as opposed to just working silently in the corner, which is, it was kind of my default. Um, but at a certain point, I went to Brian Grenand and said to him, 
you know, I'm really enjoying this. This is great. And I'm interested in any level of responsibility you'll give me. And the next, I swear to you, the next day he gave me the, the full, they were going to do a sh an establishing shot of Topoka city. Yeah. From the air. And we we're going to do it as a miniature. And he handed it to me to do the design model and model the full miniature Topoka city. Wow. And I did a clay sculpt for approval of the design. Yeah. And at that point they looked at my clay sculpt and said, Oh, we can do that. And like the computers and it went away and I've never, I was just, you know, we were so young and eager and working on Star Wars and, and, to, and to have my first sort of supervised, my project supervisory gig like that just disappear. Take it away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, once you've been in the business for a while, you realize that happens all the time, but it was new to me at that moment. The one that I did was I was doing the entrance to the nightclub for episode two. Yeah. And I mistook a six for a nine <laughs> the mentioning. And so I built the whole set exactly right, painted, lit, everything. And once they got on, on set, they discovered that it was so proportionally different than the original that they had to scrap it and go to CG. Oh, yeah. Ow. Oh, no. Ow. No. Brian came to me and he was like, you harmed us, man. Ow. I lose to CG in this battle. <laughs> oh, that was a rough day. Oh, man. Yeah. Seems like I was always worried. I was about to be sent home. Yep. First couple of years working in the shop. You want the, the tap, the pitcher tap. <laughs> I got another one. I've kind of forgotten the pressure of doing stuff like this. There's no undo What really surprised me when I started understanding the high level model work was how like sometimes it came down to the difference of one sanding stroke. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. and you can't take them back. Oh, well, nope. you can, there's always Bondo. Yeah, there's always like CA glue with the uh, filler, the uh, baking soda. Yeah. I probably should have cut this slot before I assembled this, but 2020 hindsight. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I love this bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, right. Ah, I can't get it on fast enough. Come on. Oh, that's not bad. Is that's it? really hard to do without cracking it. I know. I think I got it. All right. Ah, ah, armature wire. <laughs> I think that's how I'll make these flaps poseable. I still have no idea how this is mounting to your dealie bob, but I figure we'll work that out. You know, if it has just some sort of top plate yeah. on it. I figure we'd leave a top plate until. You know, actually a small one. I think it just mounts oh. there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could almost make this a design that does this. I don't think it wants to do that, but it could. But yeah, I think it just goes in at a certain, a single point. Then I think what I may do is have a, uh, 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 a wrench shaped block come out from here and come up above this and then I'll put some styrene, I put some armature wire in there so we can pose those. Nice. All right, uh, how to attach, that's to that, that's to that. 
This, this is a this is a bigger chunk of wrench shape than I ever had when I was a young model oh. maker. <laughs> Getting gold. Yeah. No, <laughs> solid gold. Yeah. Oh, good. I like that. Dude, it's gonna be one of those parts that when you vacuum form the plastic's gonna get really thin down at the bottom because it's so tall. I'll then make it's it as good that we only have one thick size yeah. of it. I'll make it as short as I can, I guess, for that reason. Hey, that's respectable. So where we're at, I started off on this, uh, this arrangement down underneath the bike, which is some guns and some flaps. Uh, I've got, oh, no, not that one. I've got a flap that sits there. On the gun, I'm working out the attachment method. They're already posable because I've got some armature wire in there. Uh, and I have a platform here for attaching to the underside of what Dave's working on, which is going to be like somewhere around back there. Something like that. With front cowling. With the front cowling, yep. Yeah. So we're getting there. Uh, I don't see any greeblies except for like in the driving interface. Driving interface, and by the time you get to the back of the gun. You yeah, maybe there's some business. things for return. And I've cut, I've left all these, these pipes long so we can muck, muck with them. Oh. That looks great. It's been so long since I've played with parts like that. Me too. Oh, look at that! <laughs> <laughs> too easy. It really surprised me when I was getting better at sanding how much this, like, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Uh, yeah, we'll be able to finish by the end of the day. Gray primer. That's where we're getting to once we get gray primer. And that's actually where... That's kind of one of the best parts. Like one of, to me, one of the, like you, you put it all together, you understand the aesthetics, but the gray primer like confirms all your suspicions <laughs> or subverts them. It's almost always a success. Yeah. It, oh, or better say, it all, almost always helps. Yeah, yeah. When Thing Crazy Glue really does work, it's insane. Oh. One of the reasons I'm blowing on it is that the carbon dioxide in my breath actually does aid and abet the cyanoacrylate glue in its flashing off. I'm sure this is a conversation you run into on occasion, but there's that, <laughs> there's that question about how much design is involved in model making if you're working from the designs of the art department and things yeah. like that. And whenever I'm doing something like this, and by the time you're in the middle of trying to convert <clears throat> 2D things into a functioning 3D form, yeah, you, you really start to feel more like a designer. It's totally true. I mean, because you have to make so many weird... There are aspects of that translation from 2D to 3D where it's like, oh, I see the gesture you wanted, but it doesn't work within physics, but I can still get you the weight that you need. Or yeah. the... the, the 
I ended up getting a lot out of model making by remembering my art history about how painters move your eyes through a painting. Hmm. Right? That way in which your eye draws to what's important or yep. not. Yeah. By the way, if you ever want to make a uh, Ghostbusters proton pack, you let me know. I have molds for everything. Everything. There we go. Thank you. Brilliant. Yeah, that'll do it. The hunting for greeblies is a, not an exact science, but you're always looking for stuff that doesn't just add detail, but also scale and like gets you to believe the size of the thing. There's some great ones in here. Actually, I, I don't think we need to go through this just yet, but there's some, there's some good stuff in here. Some of these guys, these little, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, for pedals there. Oh yeah, this is some operator shit. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's kind of, that can take us down a road to for the fun uh -huh, thingies. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and, and, and there's two that are symmetrical. So. Yeah. <laughs> because a really common practice with this is that you find the dream part that you want, but you either need three of them or the flip part. And an hour goes by and you get more stubborn, more stubborn, and <laughs> digging deeper into the boxes. Then there's once per job, you always send a greebly mold to the mold shop and be like, just give me 10 of these. <laughs> I texted John after seeing Rogue One and I was like, dude, that close up of the Star Destroyer, I recognize model parts on it and yet I know it wasn't a model. What the hell? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, well, we yeah. finally made a salt and pepper shaker full of digital greeblies. Yep. That's amazing. Because the stuff in Rogue One looked so dead on the money to uh, New Hope. Yeah. Yeah, that was thrilling. That was so, it was, to me, it was hilarious that I was like looking at this and realized, oh, I have a point of view. I think this is, <laughs> I think they're cheating this. Part so small that static electricity is your enemy. <laughs> Are you doing little evergreen rivets? Yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I can tell by the volume of my complaint. <laughs> kind of the most ideal dispenser for Weld On is in fact a soda can. And it's the bottom there. So I'm going to pour just a little bit of Weld On in there. And I'll show you how I attach the rivets. Put this here. The thing about rivets is they don't have to match on each side, but they definitely have to feel right with each other. So here's how we attach. You don't even use tweezers. The brand newest of X-Acto blades will pick up a piece of styrene this small if you just touch it. That's it. I literally, it's not even spearing at this point. It's, then I, the tiniest amount of weld bond and you put it right on your mark and lift it up. Oh, those look pretty good. This is the end of a styrene rod that I simply sliced with the mat knife. This seems like a laborious process, but once you've got it set up, it actually can happen pretty fast. And there's a final, there's usually a, no, nope, you're going to move. There we go. There's usually a final greebly pass where you have a palette full of the tiniest, tiniest details and you're just sitting there breaking up surfaces and making them, making them work. I'm gonna take this one last piece and I'm gonna add it right over there. I'm assembling and waiting for five minute epoxy. Assembling and oh, oh, it's happening. Why don't we got a thing? I really like that slot. That keeps the things cool. So here we are. There's some, they don't fit together, but yep, yep. it will. I will make out of run shape this thing that will boom onto there. Yep. And I'll leave a radius back here. Whatever that's going to be. Excellent. And, and that. 
Terrific. Land you want to tell there. me that radius and I'll turn a tube of wrench shape and then we can go down from there? Mm -hmm. Excellent. I haven't a clue what that profile is like, sure. but I'll make a block and I'll figure it out. I'll make something about two inches long so we've got plenty to play with. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's just pick a radius. Well, here we go. Yeah. Oh, looking at the back side of this, it's like, I can't read numbers. Inch and a quarter. <laughs> Fair enough. What's funny is this is exactly, this is exactly what wrench shape is built for. It's an engineering resin. And it's for working out the size of your prototypes on your CNC and your mills. And it doesn't dull the blades at all. I, honestly, I think it would be worth just taking some styrene. Yeah, and, and cutting doing out a, some, a few yeah, yeah. different Fair things enough. and we can just hold it up. I'll do that while you're doing that and then we can hold them up and make our, make our final call. Might not be. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not bad. Yeah, that's. There we are with a mm -hmm, very 2D mm -hmm. version of this. Yeah, yeah. And those are all pretty blocky. You know, almost a, an add on could kind of go onto here. Right, I like these sort of. Right, yeah, so yeah. A, a sit. And you know, that top profile could almost stay like that because there'll be an add on to this yeah. as well. I... But maybe down, you know, I could strike a line and then... And then do a, a, a chamfer. chamfer. Yeah, I like that. End. I think that's great. Because otherwise it just screams, I'm a chunk of... Yeah, I think chamfer shape. is right. <laughs> I forgot to put the model in. <laughs> oh, but it did work, so it's a proof of concept. Very nice. Very nice. Here, we're going to try this one more time. <laughs> I used to have in my old shop with this vacuum form and the red one, like five or six full droops of plastic that I, you know, you got to wait for it to do its thing. So it's, I get impatient and then, yeah, and then I move on. And then I turn around when I hear it smoking or Josh says, hey, it's smoking. Ay, ay, ay. Excellent. There's one. Nice. I've been trying to do something for five minutes. It requires three hands. Oh. Will you just zap that in there? Oh, yeah. And then kick it. You got any kicker? Uh-huh. All right. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Oh yeah. Chamfered and then rounded that. Oh, there could be a fun part. We just, a little bit of a visual thing down there. That's looking great. Uh, that seems stinks, but I'll put a piece of evergreen mm -hmm. around it. I'm gonna mount this. Okay, mount it. So my other inclination is to actually, in the milling machine, <laughs> do that kind of hog out. Yeah, you can barely see it in this drawing here, but that's what that was. Oh, wow. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then I'm just gonna draw a line here so I know what my straight across is. There's an axiom among saxophonists that if you find a mouthpiece that you like, you buy it no matter what, because the specific relationship between a sax player and their mouthpiece and their embouchure and their instrument, the embouchure is how they hold their mouth, is super, super subtle and super important. 
by the same token, I'd say if you're a modeler and someone tells you about a pair of flush cutting nippers, <laughs> just buy them. Like I have never regretted having half a dozen pairs of these and there's always new ones. These here are uh, Nipex, Knipex, I'm sorry, Knipex, and they're my new favorites. These are pretty stunning. Oh, it's like a freaking instrument cluster. <laughs> wow. Done. Yeah. No, I know it's like precisely what we want. I can almost read the RPMs on that as it is. <laughs> that may have worked. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you like? Oh. <laughs> Just a little sanding stick down there. Shall I glue that? Yeah, go for it. Okay. That's where you put your lunchbox. Yeah. <laughs> there. This looks great. Just feel that transition with your finger. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> Control handle. Nice. Oh, that's great. Oh, these are just press fit into the uh, into these, by the way, just with two pieces of styrene. So mm. they can actually be angled if we want to. Oh, that's a plus. I I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd sooner. I don't know if I'd. Mess yeah. with that space, but that could stay there, and it could just have a little friend above it. It's a little, it's a little lonely. Yeah, a little. Um, so if there were just like maybe two small ones that went on either side, all right. You know, just like man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a couple of those. Yeah, I'll throw those on. Can I steal this one too. Uh huh. Okay. Actually worked. Yeah. Sure. All right. <laughs> Make a mark and I'll drill it. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yeah. It is so much hilarious to me that so much of it is doing this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. Don't break it now. This is where all hell breaks <laughs> loose. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> See if I can't get a little actual grip on this situation. Dude, this is so much fun. <laughs> oh, there yeah, it is. There's, there's actually great benefit to uh, making it happen in a certain amount of time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that used to be how we did it. Yeah. I'm going to get a mask on and turn the fan up. All right. Here comes the best part. I'm almost not even looking at it when I'm doing this. I'm almost doing it statistically. The trick is just light, 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 light coats. It'll dry faster that way. It'll cover better that way. 
Oh, it's starting to be something. Uh, and... Look, I look at it and I feel like I can tell how someone's supposed to ride it. And there's a way in which it also feels a little like it's going backwards. Oh yeah, which is a classic but little... Uh, it's a classic Star Wars, Wars design Wars. move. Yeah. If this were a two-day build, there's some tooth and clean. Yeah, yeah, happen, yeah. But, yeah, but this, this gets the... Away. This allows the art department to start their budgeting. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you have... Ah, there it is. Oh, no, it's still, ah, I just did a golly. <laughs> we had a supervisor at ILM, Steve Golly, legend. Uh, and Steve was a wonderful supervisor. He would, he's been around since Star Wars and had an uncanny ability to put his thumb in the middle of a fresh paint job. Or just break, whatever you were Or break, yeah, no, he'd come he'd over. Hey, how's it going? And he'd go by and you'd be like this. <laughs> Please don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like the gray paint. It is really fun to do a class with people, like 20 people, and when they spray them gray, like everyone just loses their mind. <laughs> Dude! Hey! <laughs> that was so much fun, my friend. It's been freaking over, over 20 years since we did this together. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> of course, I want to go back and panelize that. Oh, there's, yeah. there's a whole nother round, but... Uh... It captures the spirit of it yeah. pretty darn well. I think you could, uh, I think there's, uh, I feel like I want to see a targeting computer. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the. Oh yeah. The, oh. It's that's pretty freaking close. Pretty good. Um, that's the three quarter we were, yeah, most. Yeah. Being mm -hmm. able to angle those down would be a bonus. Yeah. I, I genuinely like it. I do too. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. <laughs> well, since you're leaving town for a few months, uh, I'll hold on to this here for a while. Yeah, and when you come back, you take it and you can, right, well, uh, you can switch it back and forth. You know, another nice thing about it, which we always talk a lot about in design of stuff like this, is there's a really busy area. Yeah. And then an area of rest. Yeah. So that those things play off each other. It's a really common mistake to make that busy area and then you know, put stripes on that yep, thing. Yep, yep, you yep, yep. A lot of, uh, it's funny, there's a, and there's a specific way in which seeing it physically, I don't know what your equivalent is when you're working in CG, but over busyness is a common CG disease. Yeah, yeah, no, the, what I just, that little uh, lecture I just gave about areas of rest, those words were <laughs> yeah. said a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really, uh, these side pieces are gorgeous. You look great. Dude, that was really, that, that was a one day build. We started at yep. 10, it's 5.30, not bad. Proper work day. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, my friend. Hey, Let's do you. this again. You bet. All right, see you guys next time. <laughs>